Hello, this is Dr. Scott Denstead, founder of Easy Weather Brief, your best online source for aviation weather and education. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the Easy Route profile display. In order to see the route profile, first of all, you need to define a route. In the upper left, locate the Route Editor button, and you can add your departure your route of flight in your destination airport as well as your altitude. So in this case I've chosen that we're going to fly from Caribou, Maine down to Washington Dulles Airport at 10,000 feet and we're going to allow Easy Weather Brief to use the forecast winds to calculate our ground speed based on the airspeed that we've put into our Easy settings. And to see the Easy Route Profile find the Route Profile button next to the route editor and click on that. Now the route profile has four different kinds of displays that include wind and temperature, a display for clouds, display for icing, and of turbulence. And we'll look at each one of these in a little more detail. And first of all, to orient you for this particular display, you'll notice that on the left side of the display is the altitude. So we start out with an altitude of mean sea level of zero up to flight level 500 or 50,000 feet. You can control the max altitude with a setting here on the right. So I can also set that to 250 or 25,000 feet for the maximum displayed altitude and also 150 for 15,000 feet. At the bottom of the display you'll notice that our route is defined. So on the very far left you'll see our departure airport of Caribou and to the right you'll see the destination airport of Washington Dulles. Now the route is broken up by multiple segments. Each segment has a specific length. So in this case, the first segment starts out at zero and we have a segment of 42 miles. Another 42 miles gives us 84. And so this is just a running total of our distance from our departure airport. And you also notice a time right below that, which defines our departure time, as well as the time of arrival, again, based on our ground speed that's calculated in the winds aloft. On the chart, you'll also see your planned altitude shown here in magenta. And for this route, we're planning to depart at 3Z. And so you see that starting out here on the very far left at 0300. Zulu. In addition, you'll see the terrain along your route represented here in brown. And at the very top, you'll see some icons which depict the weather at those various different segment points along your route of flight. In this case, you can see that the weather is supposed to be mostly cloudy with a chance of rain here at 6Z along this particular part of the segment. So one of the other things you'll notice is that the background here is more of a black color and that represents a flight at night and you'll watch as the sun rises the background changes to a very bright blue color giving us an indication that we're in a daytime scenario. And if you continue on you'll see that it turns into night and eventually back into the daytime as you move your departure advisor to the right. So let's zoom in a little bit and go down to 15,000 feet where we can see our planned altitude here shown in magenta at 10,000 feet. Now on the winds and temperatures profile you'll see this icon representing the winds aloft and temperatures aloft at that particular altitude and location. The magenta arrow is basically your course or your heading. 
In this case, we can see that a flight from Caribou to Dulles has a course of 224 degrees. You'll also see wind barbs represented as well. These are standard representations of the wind barbs and it's a direction from. So in this particular case, we see the wind is from the northeast. In fact, we can see that the wind direction is showing 034 degrees at 27 knots. Now, in the circle, that defines the headwind or tailwind component. If it's green, that means you have a tailwind. In this case, a tailwind of 26 knots. If it's red, that would mean that you would have a headwind. And if it's black, that means that the winds are direct crosswind, and you'll see a zero mark there. Or you may see a C for calm or light or variable winds. That would be true down here closer to the surface where you see a zero, and you notice that the wind is a direct crosswind for that particular route of flight. The other thing you'll see is temperatures defined. In this particular case, it's a temperature of minus 3, and it will be in Fahrenheit or Celsius depending on your easy settings. In this case, I have it set to Celsius, and so therefore this is a temperature of minus 3.1 degrees Celsius. And you'll also notice right below that, there's a departure from standard. In this case, it's 2.3 degrees below standard temperature for that particular altitude. So this icon gives you a very quick representation of the winds and temperatures at any particular altitude. The other thing you'll notice are these dashed lines. These are isotherms, or lines of constant temperature. This shows you the minus 10 degree isotherm. The red dashed line shows you the zero degree isotherm as well. And you'll see here over to farther to the right, as we head further south, it's the 10 degree isotherm. And that can give you a quick indication of what the temperatures are aloft and how they change along your route of flight. So let's take a look at the clouds display. In this case, you'll see two different shades. You'll see a gray color, which represents scattered or few clouds. And you'll see a bright white, which represents broken or overcast clouds. And this should be pretty representative of what you see here as well. In this case, at this particular segment point, the sky is expected to be scattered at 1600 and broken at 2200 feet. So you'll see the scattered representation with a broken representation above that. In the case of sky clear, you'll see a rectangle which shows you that you have a clear sky scenario. And given the temperatures aloft here are near the zero degree isotherm and colder, with clouds present, you'd expect to see the possibility of icing. So we can select the icing, and sure enough, we see that we have a high probability of icing, in this case around 73 or 71 percent, right near our departure airport, and certainly right around the altitude we're planning to fly at 10,000 feet, shown by the magenta line. We can also look at the severity for icing here, and we see we have a moderate severity, as well as a light severity, and even trace severity. And over here farther to the right, there's actually showing heavy severity. If there were SLD present, in this case there is no SLD forecast for this route, it would show up as well, similar to what you would see on the probability. And then you can overlay both the severity and SLD together. Lastly, we have turbulence. Now, turbulence can be defined for clear air turbulence, or CAT, and you'll see mountain wave turbulence, MWT. Right now, there isn't any mountain wave turbulence present here on this particular route. And then you can combine the mountain wave and clear air turbulence together in one display. And so turbulence is defined by eddy dissipation rate. And in this particular case, I have this set up for a light aircraft. And so the colors represent EDR values, where you see green as being light turbulence, 
the tan colors are moderate turbulence, and if there were any severe or extreme turbulence, they would show up as red and dark red, respectively. And now we can also use the departure advisor to see how the turbulence changes with time along our route of flight. So this allows us to kind of minimize and pick the time that represents the least impact in terms of turbulence or potentially for icing, as the case may be. So if we go back to icing, for example, we can see in this particular case, we'll go to the icing probability, and we can see how that icing picture will change over time along our route of flight. It's also important to note, once you get past about 18 hours or so in the future, we lose the icing and turbulence forecasts that are not provided at this point. So icing and turbulence forecasts you will only see in the first 18 hours or so of your route of flight. That provides you with an overview of the easy route profile. Thanks for listening and enjoy the simplicity of easy weather brief.